Remote support as a method of service delivery is covered when it meets the following criteria. One, it is chosen and preferred as a service delivery method by the person or their guardian. Two, it appropriately meets the person's assessed needs. Three, it is provided within the scope of the service being delivered. And four, it is provided as specified in the person's support plan. When an individual who lives in their own house or a family home chooses to receive remote monitoring, the service cost can be billed directly to their waiver through EAA or 24-hour emergency assistance. When an individual who resides in a residential setting chooses to receive remote monitoring, the provider will still be the agency to bill the state for the hours of service provided. If they choose to subcontract with the remote support agency, the provider will still bill the state for the service and then pay the subcontract remote support agency themselves. When authorizing a 15-minute unit-based approved service, to be delivered remotely, the U4 modifier must be used to indicate the amount of the service that can be provided remotely. The service rate is the same whether delivered in person or remotely, but since DHS has goals to increase the amount of remote service provision, the modifier is used to help obtain this data. A big reminder is that remote support is something that should be offered to everyone. Not only does DHS strongly recommend it, but there is also a legislative requirement that assistive technology be explored and considered at each person's 45-day meeting and at least annually thereafter.